Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Croom Talk. Today, I am here with the tall man, the big man, Greg Russo. Yo, yo, yo. What's up? What's up, y'all? How are you? Doing good, man. Doing good. Can't complain. Blessed. Just got back from the Von Miller Pass Rush Summit. Mm-hmm. How was that? It was great, really, just to be able to be around those minds. And I feel like football-wise, it's kind, of, it's kind of a right way to do things already. But just hearing the little nuances and little tweaks that people put to their game, it's real interesting to see like how they see things and how they get themselves, how they get themselves to get the production they get when certain things aren't working for them. Just the, the way they change their game up in like small ways is, is really, really, really interesting. That was your second year, right? Mm-hmm. At the the Pass Rush Summit. So what was different this year from last year? Um, I'd say like last year, you know how we got up and kind of talked about our production? My first year, I didn't really have that much production, so I didn't have a chance. To, I, I had like four sacks. But I had, I feel like I had a, in a lot better second season, so I had, I was able to go up there and articulate and speak on how I, how this worked, how that worked for me. So I feel like that was cool to be one of those guys up there, opposed to the year before I was one of the dudes sitting in the seats, taking notes. Even though I was still taking notes, mm-hmm. I still got my chance to go up there and, and speak through what I see as a player. Yeah, that was cool, and I feel like, you know, because you we spoke about it before we did a little interview about like you know like you leaning towards like Max Crosby when he's there to, to mm-hmm. kind of just pick, and you can see like. You guys, you guys all gravitated to him, and you guys probably spoke for probably a good 40 minutes. Yeah, literally. Because just the way he plays, just the effort he plays, but he's not like the – he's not like super crazy, like bending and stuff like that, but but he, he plays fast. He's, he's, he's athletic enough. You know, he's smart, and he just plays with like a certain intensity that is like – is not really rivaled by many. So just to be able to see that in the – Take some of that, put that into my game. Like I feel like playing aggressive could always put you over the top if you if you need to compensate for something else. So the way he plays, he's like a bat out of hell at all times. He's flying around. He plays with his hair on fire. That's kind of what I'm trying to play like too. Yeah. So you you said you watched this on Zoom in college, right? Mm-hmm. So how different was it being that being a part of it than to just kind of watching on the screen? It was real different because like when you're watching on Zoom, you can't really be like you can't ask any questions. Yeah. But like being there, like you can go up to Cam Jordan and ask this. Obviously, you can go up to Vaughn. He's our teammate. But if you're just there in general, you can go up to Vaughn and ask him that. Go up to Michael Parsons if you're a younger player in college and ask him something or whatever. So, I mean, it, it was it was dope to be there in person opposed to watching on Zoom. On Zoom was still cool because I still picked up a lot. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, just being around those players and in that same room is a different feeling. What? So, I, I, I seen that the Zoom was a part of, like, the classroom stuff. Was the Zoom a part of – Yeah. Uh, the field stuff too. Yeah, so the Zoom was just just the classroom, pretty okay. much. I I kind of compare it to being like going to watch like let's say Playboy Cardi live in concert or like watching Playboy Cardi like on YouTube. Yeah, a concert For of sure. Cardi. Like it's still gonna be lit. You be like, oh, I know this song, but yeah. like it ain't gonna be the same because if you're there, you're really there. So yeah, it's different. Yeah, yeah, that's sweet. I uh I had a, an expectation going into it, and it, it definitely blew my mind too. Just it's just dope to see you know like minds. You know, sharing the same passion, but and willing exactly. to teach pretty much their opponent. You know, that exactly. was that was one thing that was dope to me. Yeah, it's very selfless, and it's just like it's all about pass rush. You know, it's not mm-hmm. about what team you're on. It's not about status, whatever. It's just about getting better and just people sharing ideas. I was talking to a whole bunch of players about stuff that I do. I wasn't just there just listening. I was there teaching as well and showing what I saw in this play or how I got this to work for me. So like, it was cool to kind of it's always cool to kind of give back to the game and give back to the game that got you to where you to where you're at right now yeah it's crazy to think too because you're obviously so young in your career mm-hmm. like yeah. how far down the line in your career that you're going to be like the cam jordans and the von millers facts. and the max crosby's of the pass rush summit like no facts, facts i can't wait for that that's gonna yeah. be lit yeah so you know getting into football when was football like a thing for you as a kid i'd say I started playing when I was like five, but that's just like catch and stuff like that. Yeah, catch and just in the neighborhood running around playing like uh, murder ball, which is like you just try to go after a person with a ball. Fumbly, and, rumbly, like yeah, 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 that type of stuff. Like yeah, five, and then like I like begged my parents to play tackle football. They're like, nah, flag, and I was like, nah, I'm not playing flag football. Yeah. I wanted to play tackle football, and finally, when I was eight years old, they let me play. And then from from that point on. Crazy story. I actually started off playing DN, and but I didn't want to play DN back then. I wanted to play wide receiver because like I grew up watching like Randy Moss and like all of them. So I was like, nah, like I'm a receiver. I want to catch the ball. I want to catch touchdowns. But obviously, DN ended up being my position. But just back in the day, I was always trying to play receiver, play running back because I saw like Adrian Peterson balling out and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So 
that's kind of how I saw myself too because obviously I'm a little kid watching football. Also, I'd say playing Madden really got me into it too because yeah. I remember Madden 05, I think Ray Lewis was on the cover. Ray Lewis one. Yeah, yeah. Ray probably, honestly, that was the last one I played. For real? Yes. It was a good one too. Yeah. But That's when they made the hit stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, so that's back in the day. That got me like, yo, like – I, I, I got to play football. Madden 05, and then, like, just using the Ravens, and they had Ed Reed and all that. Like, it was like, bro, I got to play football. So, yeah, like, Madden, was, I feel like, was a huge part of pushing me towards playing football. Yeah. Obviously, the rest is history. But just that, seeing that, it was, like, really, like, I was, like, so just mesmerized by it. You know, you by still that play idea. Madden? Yeah, I still play Madden. Yeah. yeah not as much. I kind of, like put down video games like a year ago just to focus more mm -hmm. on, not to be cliche, but just to focus more on football and invest more time in it. Because, like, if you're playing, like, let's say Madden Ultimate Team, you could get really invested and you could put a lot of time into it. So, mm -hmm. like, I'd rather not put all that time in it. It's a distraction. Yeah, like, it gets to a point where it's like, you know, like, you come home and then, not that, like, I just feel like it's not that wholesome just to come home and then get on the game until yeah. 10 o'clock and then say, all right. I'm watch thirty minutes of film and go to sleep. That's like nah, that ain't it. I feel like it's better to maybe watch a show, like be on the phone with my homeboys and my family, yeah. and then like you know what I'm saying. But like it's fun though. I got yeah. nothing against it. It's just it's real fun. And then like yeah. with the uh, Madden Ultimate Team, it's like they got cards and you start buying stuff, and it's just like it's a rabbit hole, bro. It goes downhill yeah. from there. <laughs> it's no, it's yeah, no joke. So like how long? Like <clears throat> you said, you know, since you were a little kid. How long were you a little kid? When did the growth spurt happen? Uh, see, I was always kind of tall. I'd say from the point. Since I was, like, seven years old, I was always kind of, like, Yeah, you were the kid that they looked at, like, he's definitely not yeah. supposed to be in this class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a tall kid. And like, even, like, for, like, Little League games, like, when I was playing Optimus football. From they like, thought you were cheating. They they're thought like, I was, like, they're, the like, they're like, who is that? Me. They're like, who is that? But, but, uh, but yeah, it was it was crazy. It was crazy. I was always a tall, pretty big person, whether, it's, whether I was at football or I was, like, in school. And people are always, like, telling me, like, you should play basketball, you should play basketball. People, people still be, like, why don't you play basketball? I'm, like. Because, like, one, I love football, and God has blessed me enough to allow me to make it to the NFL. So, I mean, like, why would I, why would I want to play basketball? Why would I be like, oh, I wish I played basketball? Like, it doesn't make no sense. Plus, Florida's not really a basketball spot. Like, mm -hmm. people don't play basketball in Florida. Like, people do, obviously, but, like, it's more of a football type of place. Yeah, for sure, because you have so many, like, top colleges down there. Yeah. No, isn't there, like, a percentage thing that, like, so-and-so so of the NFL is from yeah. Florida? Yeah, and, and specifically from, like, South Florida. Like, yeah. Like, there's schools in South Florida, like St. Thomas and Miami Center that have, like, 10 football players in the league. Or, yeah. like, American Heritage, yeah. who has a whole it's bunch. It's funny, because, like, like, you see, like, you'll we'll sit back and watch a game on TV, and they'll be like, so-and-so played with so-and-so mm -hmm. at high school, and it's just like, you know, no, just literally. imagine being a professional athlete, which is, like, such a, a hard thing. It's to so become. rare. And but, just well, being, it's not like, even that rare. boys, though. Like, for example, I went to high school with Calvin Ridley, who plays on the Jags now, and Jerry Judy, who plays on the Broncos. They were both older than me, but, like, Jerry was a year ahead of me. Calvin was, like, three, four years ahead of me. So, like, we're all on the same team. All of us ended up making it to the league, going first round, all that stuff. So it's just, like, over there, even though that might happen – once for a school in like 60, 70 years, like a normal school in the U.S., like in Florida, like, no, that is not the case. Like, for example, Heritage has like Isaiah McKenzie, Patrick Tain, all them, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's like the percentages, Brian Burns, the percentages go way up when you're down there and that like, it's just a, such a such a great atmosphere for football and for success in this competition. Yeah. Definitely, bro. Yeah, one of my, my boys I went to school with, like high school with here, plays for the Chiefs. For real? Jody Fortson. Okay, okay. Big number 88. I feel like a lot. There's a good amount of football players that come from Buffalo, low-key. There's, I think, I don't want to be wrong on this, but there's four that I know of. Uh-huh. I think uh, one of the punters uh, is from Buffalo. Chandler Jones is from Rochester or something yeah. like that. Or near. Um, Gronk is from around here or something? Gronk's from Clarence. See, like, not, not specifically Buffalo maybe, but just yeah. the area. But I consider that Buffalo. Yeah, I'm sure people will hate that. But it's just yeah. like, it's still, we call it Western New York. I feel like we're all just kind of like one big little family. Nah, facts. Because, like, and, like, for me, most people are like, where are you from? And I'm just, like, in Miami. Even though I'm from, like, Broward, Coconut yeah. Creek, Deerfield Beach area, I'm just, like, Miami because, like, yeah. That's the biggest city yeah. Or yeah, around where I'm from. You don't have to explain it. Yeah, I don't yeah, got to be like, like, oh, from, like, over like, oh what's Coconut Creek? Kind yeah. of, like. I'm just like, I'm from Miami. Yeah. yeah. And I went to school in Miami, so it's just like Miami. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, when you were in high school, what position did you play? Were you still trying to receiver? Yeah, low key. Yeah. I was actually, so I played receiver. You played both sides of the ball? Yeah, yeah, I played receiver. I played defensive end. I played 
um, outside linebacker. I played safety a lot. Um, and I actually had a couple offers. I had, like, Indiana, West Virginia, NC State, Syracuse, all to play wide receiver. And then, like, I started noticing a trend of, like, my bigger offers. I had LSU, Georgia, and University of Miami to play defensive end. So I was thinking to myself, like, if these schools – of a higher caliber offering me at defensive end, then I probably project better at defensive end. So that kind of went to me making my decision. Also, just like I feel like playing defense is less like relying on other stuff. Like if you play receiver, quarterback goes into it. Obviously, there's still team defense is that aspect, but te- defense is more in your hand a little bit. But like if you're a receiver, you need a good quarterback, you need a good O line, a, a good running game will help you out. But like all that stuff went into it. But I was like, man, if I can play defense and I can. When my one on ones playing defensive end or outside linebacker, I feel like uh, more I go like far a, with that. Your one v one situation instead of yeah. kind of relying on everything else. Exactly, like offense. I feel like things gotta work well yeah. sometimes, you know. Well, so was the you the goal the whole time? Uh, actually, there was a there was a small part of my life, probably like from my freshman to sophomore year in high school, where I wanted to go to Florida State. I went to Florida State for a camp in Tallahassee, and I was like, man, this campus is sick. Like, yeah. Uh, they just came off winning a natty a couple of years back, and I was like, yo, this is a spot. I saw Dalvin Cook there, yeah. uh, Jameis Winston, all of them. So, like, I, th- I think Ramsey might have been there, too. So, like, it was just, like, a great time. That's an easy way to reel you in. Too. Yeah, I was like, yeah. man, like, all these stars, this and that. I'm like, bro, this is a spot to be. But uh, they actually never offered me. Uh, and then Miami ended up offering me. And I just I talked to Coach Diaz. He was, like, pitching me in the school. And when, when I got that Miami offer – so I wanted to go, kind of go to Florida State before I got the Miami offer. Once I got the Miami offer, I was like, yeah, I'm going to Miami. Like, just hearing Coach Diaz talk, Coach Rick talk to me, and just the, the recruiting pitch, the family atmosphere, the proximity to home, it was mm-hmm. like a no-brainer. Yeah. 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 I've been to, like, quite a few facilities. I think the U is phenomenal. No, nah, it's phenomenal. And their, Chris, their workout facility is sick. No, nah, it's sick. And it's getting better with Chris Ball. They're, like, putting, like, hundred hundreds of millions of dollars into it to build a new facility that's yeah. going to be, like, seven stories. And, like, it's going to be crazy. Plus, they're going to have, like, more parking spots, which is sorely needed over there. Yeah, that's the U right there. All the way to the left behind the candle. Oh, yeah, I see. With yep. Dion. Indoor. Dion yeah. be working on the U? That's why I said, remember I told you, I was like, bro, I think because during the pandemic, we were there. At the U? Working out. And I was like, bro, I've probably seen you at practice. You probably you, did, bro. You said you weren't there. But what time, what time of year was it? Summer? I think it was his birthday. So, probably spring. Had to be spring. I was there. But, like... It was, like, fresh, fresh. Like, you guys, they were having you guys do, like, tuck rolls and shit. Yeah. Like, super fresh in the, like, like camp, I would say. So, like, summer? Yeah. Nah, I'd say before summer. Had to be before summer. Because I think Dion's birthday was last month. Or, so, like, April? Yeah. I wasn't there yet. Then I was there, but we went home for a little bit. We yeah. went home for COVID. So, I, like, there was probably a couple people working out at nah, the school. Was, there was, there was, there was the team. For real? Yes. Cause I was still I mean, there. I could probably find the exact date for you to be. Yeah, yeah let me know the exact date. Cause I was there for sure during April. Like, I wasn't. Yeah. I, I wasn't out of school yet. But like during April, I think I was home. Cause like it was very. It was like very optional. Cause like yeah, not even optional. I don't even remember having. I don't know. I gotta look. Yeah, get get a date for me. I gotta yeah. look back at that. Yeah. So you get there, and did you get you get hurt your first year? So what happened was. I played my first game against LSU. I didn't really get it. I played, like, special teams. Second game, I hurt my ankle. I'm out for the season. I'm in, like, a real, like, low, low, low place. Like, I'm just like, damn. I'm thinking about, like, what am I going to do with my life? Like, football, I want to I wanna make it. You know, you know how it is being hurt. So, I'm just like – and then I kind of just – like, I feel like during that time I got a lot closer to God and just I really – Realize that everything happens for a reason. At the end of the day, good or bad, you got to just trust his plan. So that was my whole thing. And just, like, just believing in myself, believing that, like, everything happens for a reason and that I'm going to bounce back. And then that's what ended up happening. But it was def- it was definitely a lot of long nights, especially right after surgery. Like, it's it's tough getting a major surgery because I, I broke my fibula. So it was, it was crazy, bro. It yeah. was crazy. I'm glad and blessed that I was able to bounce back from that. Yeah, so that's actually the reason I know I couldn't play football. For real? I broke every bone in my left leg Damn. when I was in seventh grade, and I couldn't walk till my freshman year of high school. Damn. How'd that happen? Skateboarding. Shit. My brother skateboards, or he used to. My older brother used to skateboard. Skateboarding is crazy. You ever watch the show Scarred? Yeah, when I was younger. <laughs> shit was crazy. Dude, that shit like that scares the <laughs> shit out of me. I can't yeah. watch that cringy shit. Like, Bro. Where, like the, the compound fraction where the bone's sticking out. I can't believe yeah. that was ever even allowed on TV. 
I know, right? Like that's I feel the, like nowadays they wouldn't let that. You be probably on couldn't TV. even find something like that on YouTube. Like you that's how like couldn't. monetized everything is. Yeah, it was but like yeah, like I I broke my my tibia right here. Mm-hmm. I broke my fibula down below, and I broke my my ankle. So there was like a part, like my whole leg bone was on its own, Whoa. and then I broke my growth plate. So my left leg is like an inch and a half shorter than my right. So I walk with a limp. For real? Yeah. So and I, I didn't, you know, I I grew up. I don't want to say poor, but I didn't have like health insurance and stuff when I was younger, mm-hmm. so I couldn't do physical therapy either. Mm-hmm. So like, I kind of had to do shit on my own, and like, you know, like I always thought like I could ride a bike because it's like I'm not like I'm walking and I can get from A to B, mm-hmm. and like, you know, like you don't realize it because you have both, you know, feet, but it's like you know you get to a point where like you kind of slow down where you want to put your leg down, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh shit, I can't. So then I would fall. For real? Yeah, so I don't know if I messed that up. And, like, I would do, like, physical therapy in a pool just because, like, your body's so much lighter to where I'd learn to walk on it. Yeah. But, like, my my tibia and my ankle never set right. Uh-huh. So, like, like even now, if I took my shoes off, you'd see how swollen my left ankle is just from walking. For real? Yeah, so, like, I, I tried to play football. Like, I played football my whole life. I was always a big kid just like you. Yeah. And, you know, I tried to play football when I was in high school. And, like, I was always working out, too. I was always a big kid. I enjoyed working out. I was very, very advanced in the, in the weight room. And, like, we're trying out for football. And there's, like, a, literally, like, a line. You know, like, you just look at a high school lineup, like, you know, a bunch of skinny kids and stuff yeah. like that. But <laughs> yeah. it's, like, and we're all in line, <clears throat> and we're squatting on a Smith machine. And there's 25 pounds on each side. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, like, can I go, like, do more weight? Because, obviously, I can do this. Like, I, I do this. Mm-hmm. Like, no, we're going to keep everybody on the same page. It's like, well, how am I going to progress mm-hmm. if I'm, like, kind of going backwards? Mm-hmm. So then, like, after that, like, I just came to the realization, like, like if that's not going to help me grow and, and if I'm being held back and as far as, like, the, my physical performance, I'm like, I'm not going to bother. Yeah. So then I started playing golf. I feel that. You still golf right now? Big time. That's what's up. What do you? What's your numbers like? Like I know, a hundred is good, right? Yeah. So my best round of golf is a seventy six. Oh damn, that's high. That's which is four shots over par. Yeah. Par is what pro? Well, I wouldn't say pro. They call it a scratch golfer. Or right. Par. Par is seventy. Well, most courses are either seventy one or seventy two. What will Tiger Woods hit? <laughs> if he played on the courses we played, probably like twelve under. Twelve shots under. So does that mean no, like, like twelve like, shots to get to? No. Oh, 12 under seventy. Yes. So let's like a sixty something. Sheesh, that's really good, right? Yeah. Damn. So the number is how many hit swings you get. Yes. All right. And then most courses are kind of built the same, same distance, kind of yeah. Like, same. like unless it's a par three course, which would be shorter, but most okay. courses are seventy one and seventy two par, which is like. I don't know, like, that's how many shots it should take you, but, like, as far mm. as, like, the logistics of that, it's so much harder than it is, like, you know, like, it's so hard to even break 100, like, yeah. playing, playing golf. Like, golf is very, I say it's the hardest sport. A lot of people would, would you know, compete that with saying baseball is the hardest sport. Yeah. Because you're hitting a round ball with a round bat. True. But, like, you can also put a golf ball on the ground and swing at it and not even touch it. You True. know what I'm saying? So I swear. It depends how you look at it. Because the golf ball is, like, this small, yeah. so it's, like. Yeah, I feel like golf is up there. I tried. It's not a sport for me. You just got to keep trying. You probably uh, also use clubs that aren't, don't fit you. True. <laughs> That's very true. Because yeah. the clubs were like, I was like bending down like this. Like You got to come up back. to my tournament, bro. When is it? July 17th. Where is it? Or July 16th, Harvest Hill Orchard Park. Okay. I try to make it like right before you guys have to go to camp just so there's no issues about it. Mm-hmm. But like it kind of does re- result for you to come in a couple of days early. Mm-hmm. But it's a sick ass tournament. Last year I think like 25 of the guys played in it and it all goes to charity. Yeah. So. If I if I come out there I probably just hang out. Yeah, you can for do the most that. Part, just hang out. Vibe, talk with you, talk with the people and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a dope little vibe. I'll have to send you like the the video from last year. For sure. It was cool. But yeah, so like after you know, like, even myself, when I broke my leg, I thought shit was over. Mm-hmm. Like, because then you're thinking, like, like even now, bro, like, I hurt my hand and my thumb. I don't know. I told you about it. I'm not going to talk about it on the podcast. Mm-hmm. But I can't golf. I haven't been able to golf for two months now. Mm-hmm. Like, I just can't. And, like, that's, like, the one thing out of, like, yeah, the four yeah, things that make me happy. Yeah. So, it's, like, I can only imagine, like, not being able to play football. Like, yeah. especially because you kind of devote your life to that at that point. Literally, it's a true story right what there. What was like the turning point though? Like where you're like, okay, like we can figure this out. Football wise, yeah. After my injury, yeah. Uh, literally, kind of once I got back, you know, I worked really hard to get back, and then just like a few practices in, I was already like 
kind of like balling out. I had like a really strong spring again because my fr- I early enrolled in the college, so my first spring was good. Got hurt that season. Then my next spring, I was coming back off an of ankle, so I was like, let's see how this goes. Like, but uh, obviously worked real hard with, with recovery, rehab, and all that stuff. And then I just kind of hit the ground running and took off from there. Had a really strong season. My uh, freshman year, I had 15 and a half sacks. Like only Chase Young had more. And then um, I got ACC defensive rookie of the year. I got second team All American, first team All ACC. And then that's really the only year college football I played for real because this, the next year was 2020, COVID hit. And then I just opted out. So I was just like, hey, let me just take that next step. I feel like I'm ready for it. And uh, if I can go back and do it again, I wouldn't change a thing because, yeah. yeah. Things worked I feel out. Like having all them accolades probably helped you mentally too. Like definitely, because I knew like I was a good player. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel like a lot of sports, whatever it is, is about confidence and knowing you're, like, you're that guy. Like you, nobody else is gonna believe in you unless you believe in you first. So like just knowing like right, I can do this. Like I'm a, I'm a baller. Like I can play at this level. That's that goes for so much. So like once you commit to that process, like okay, I'm gonna you know enlist in the draft. Is it like? Is there any second thoughts? Like, damn, I only played one year. Like, man, I hope this works out. Uh, I'd say, I'd say to those people, like, let's say I'm getting interviewed, and people, people would put that in my head, like, oh, you only played one year, blah blah blah. Like, why would a team pick you or whatever? Should like, I check them? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, cause I don't be trying to be too cocky or whatever. But yeah. I'll just be like, yo, I know, I know, I can play this league. Like, I know I'm a dog. I know the type of competitor and player I am. Like, and I and I think I've showed that to a certain degree so far. So, I mean, it was really just that, and it's really, like I said, just believing in myself, even though people are going to say whatever. Yeah, just like, yeah, drop the mic and line up with me. I'll show you what I'm going to do. <laughs> nah, facts. <laughs> facts. How many teams were, were looking at you? Uh, Probably, like, a little more than, like, a little more than half the league. Yeah. Probably, but, like, I feel like there's only a few teams that are looking at you, like, seriously. Yeah. You know, like, Could really. Can you pick those out, or are you just kind of? Uh. What you do you have, mean? Can you I have to like keep like a chip on your shoulder when you're in those situations. Mm-hmm. Like, do you feel like like you know when people are just kind of like not fucking with you? Yeah, and you, you know do. who does. People just ask, be asking dumb questions like, "Oh, oh, like we heard you're a good person. Like, are you too nice? Like, just stupid shit. Like, yeah, I'm too nice, but I play football for a living. I play defensive end, but I'm too nice. Like, just dumb shit. Like, what does me being nice or me being like polite or me being like a cool dude have to do with? Me being on the field, yeah. you feel me? Like you won't, li- you yeah. won't line up on the field against me. Yeah. Like if you line up on the field against me, you're saying I'm nice. You'll see how nice I am. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like obviously I didn't say all that. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't say shit to them and like curse at, yeah. all, at all. But like just that's just kind of like my mindset. P- people still do it now. Like oh, like, oh you're nice. Uh, but like at the end of the day, like I know the type of player I am. I know what I'm about when I'm on the field. I'm not thinking about my off the life. My off my off the field life, like I'm thinking about like just competing and getting to the quarterback, making plays, helping my team win football games. So yeah. like, yeah, it's a, I feel like it's a big cliche in football. Like, oh, you oh you're if you're if you're like this, like I feel like personality doesn't always translate to who you are yeah. on the field. Because well, you know? then you got, you know, obviously you got guys like Cam Jordan who don't give a fuck about who's on the other side of the ball. That's what I'm saying. You know? Yeah, and, yeah. It, and it doesn't matter because it's all about performance. Yeah, facts. Literally, that's it. Yeah. So through, going through that process, who were like the top three teams that you feel were like really messing with you? Uh, Buffalo, obviously, but I mean, other than that, I know the Saints kind of were, but like people, the teams wouldn't really show their hands, kind of. Yeah. They wouldn't really show their cards. So like, other than those two, uh, I don't know. But I mean, there were some teams that talked to me a lot, like the Dolphins and stuff. Maybe that's just because they were in Miami or whatever. So like, there was, there was a couple, but like. I couldn't really – it was hard to tell who exactly was messing with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, without, like, obviously – obviously, you're here and you're you're glad you're here, but, like, mm-hmm. where do you want to go? Uh, honestly, I wanted to go, it sounds cliche, but just whoever believed in me, whoever, like, yeah. wanted me there. You feel it me? wasn't, like, if the Dolphins yeah. or, like, the Bucks hit you up or something mm-hmm. to stay in Florida. It didn't yeah. Matter. Yeah, it didn't matter. And, honestly, I kind of wanted to get away from Florida because, like, I wanted to go somewhere I can just focus on just football, and I feel like this was the perfect spot because, yeah. like, there's not a lot of distractions. You can just kind of just, like, just hone all the way in on your craft. And, like, yeah. also, i never been away from home, so I kind of wanted to grow a little bit and yeah. be away from South Florida and kind of find myself. When did, like, Buffalo grow on you? Uh, when did it grow on me? Probably, like, just going to the games and just feeling the atmosphere at the games. Yeah. It's just, like, it's almost like a college vibe, you know. It's like that's how passionate the fans are. Yeah. So it's a feeling like no other. So I mean, that was that was huge for me. That was dope. It was dope to see that, especially like coming into the league and hearing that like 
the NFL fans fans aren't as passionate. Yeah. And to see the fans out here, they be going crazy. So it was cool. Yeah. Yeah. How happy was your family that like you made this? Uh, they were they were they were hella happy, bro. They were. I mean, it was something that like I dreamt of in my whole entire life, and like me and all my brothers played football, so we were always like, yeah, like working to make the NFL. We all had that same mindset for me. To, so for me to finally do it. I felt like I was doing it for my family, doing it for my brothers that didn't do it. Like I felt like everything just came full circle, and, and just God's blessed me so much and blessed my family so much. I'm I'm so grateful for the mm. opportunity just to be here, and I try to remember that and not take any days for granted. So like draft day, that phone rings. Like what's going through your head before you hit answer? Uh, before my before it rings, I'm just. It's like we're getting to like pick thirty. The Buffalo Bills pick the thirty. So I'm just thinking like, damn, like. This is getting close to me, like, having to go home. Did you whatever. also feel like anybody who would have picked you was already – they already selected? Mm -hmm, so yeah. you were kind of just like, like, okay, okay, like, yeah, this is I what we have? Yeah, I felt like I felt like I should have went higher, but who who doesn't feel like that, you know? Yeah. Like, but that just makes you who you are. Yeah, facts. I feel like I should have went higher, but I was just like, hey, it is what it is, bro. God's plan. Wherever I go, I know I'm going to give them my all. No matter, I'm going to do my best no matter what. So, like – when they picked me, I was just so I was just so happy that a team believed in me. A team took a chance on me, and like I said, like I knew I was gonna give them everything I had, and I'm a, and I'm not close to finishing. I'm gonna keep on doing that, and I'm gonna keep getting better, and I won't stop till I'm done. Yeah, that's awesome, man. No, I feel like sure. like I don't know, making your family proud. I feel like is a very underrated like mm -hmm. like wish that I feel like a lot Literally. of people don't. I feel like a lot of people don't get to embrace it either because I feel like a lot of people don't push themselves to do that mm -hmm. no nah, it's literally one of the things that i live for for sure just making my mom proud making my dad proud making my brothers proud of me just it's like it's like up there with anything when it comes to what pushes me you know like mm -hmm. what motivates me just like to be able to make a big play and then talk chop it up with them after the game and see that they're happy see that they're wearing my jersey i'm just like man like what a moment you know yeah and you get to see it every Sunday. Hey, facts. That's, yeah. I'm trying to see it every Sunday, literally multiple times a year, playoffs. I'm trying to see it after every single game. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, this is this is the year if it's going to be the year. Mm -hmm. Oh, facts. How confident are you? Really confident. I'd say definitely the most confident I've been. You know, like year one I was coming in just trying to, like, see what the league's like. Obviously put my best foot forward, but, like, just not knowing sometimes. And then uh, year two, I feel like I had a real, I had a really, and a lot better season. I really took a jump as a player, and I got hurt my ankle. I missed like four games, but I still doubled my production. Cause my my first year I had four sacks, then I had eight, and I had two called back. So I really had ten, but ended up being eight. But like I missed four games, and then the whole second half of the season, I played on an ankle that like wasn't wasn't really right. You feel me? Obviously, when you get a high ankle sprain, you're like you're fighting that for months. Yeah, there's no. There's no getting back from that unless you're just not doing anything. Yeah, facts. And that's, you know that's not the case yeah. when you're playing professional football. So just like hopefully God willing, just having the opportunity to, to just have a full year healthy at this stage in my career, year three, I'm super pumped for it, bro. I, I couldn't be more confident and I couldn't be more excited. I'm up, up, for, I'm up for whatever. Yeah, I know you're up for whatever. You just hired a new agent. Yeah, facts. You know, this is the biggest year for you. Facts. You ready yeah. to do your thing. I'm ready, bro. Can't wait. I can't wait either. You know, and it's funny because, like, you know, getting to know who – I feel like we gotten to know each other so well yeah. just from, like, Vegas Summit and stuff, stuff like yeah. that. So yeah. it's cool. Like, I'm rooting for you, you know, and it's like – you know, I was just talking about it on DQ's pod last night or the day before, and mm -hmm. it's just like – like, I, I like to see people succeed – more than like the team as a whole like not saying i don't want the team to succeed because obviously i'm a diehard fan but it's like like you know you see people come and go like mm -hmm. you know and you just gain like a relationship with them and you just you understand like how the league works like being like on an internal now instead of like from a fan standpoint because they just look at like a lot of athletes like they're just numbers or whatever like see you later but it's like mm -hmm. you know you get to know these guys personally like even with poe like you know there was no chance i thought he was coming back Mm -hmm. Like, you know, so it's just like, damn, like, you know, I want nothing but the best for him. Like, yeah. that's like goal number one, Facts. you know, and then like, obviously he's back here, thankfully. And that that's cool. But like, like when Jordan Phillips like left for the first time, it's like, yeah. damn, like there goes my dog, but he got his yeah. bag, like same with yeah. Shaq and stuff yeah, like I know, that. But I know. it's like, it's like bittersweet. <laughs> yeah. It's like bittersweet. But it's like, you can't, you got to be selfless because yeah. it's like. And, like and, and you know, obviously, cause you be around it, you know that like, like, for example, like people just be like, oh, like. We lose. Like, oh, y'all suck, blah, blah, blah. But you know it, so you wouldn't say that because you, exactly. like, you know like You know the people. You know, That's like. Why I don't even like surrounding myself with those type of people because yeah. like, I try not to talk about sports. I get into it a little bit because 
I don't like when people talk shit. And mm-hmm. I'm not, I don't like, I don't take any type of disrespect. So mm-hmm. like, if I see somebody like trying to dog somebody like yeah. on social media, it's like, bro, it's like, like that, but not, I can't, I can't do it because yeah. it's like not my place, but it's like, yeah. I like, Oh, like, Oh, you're disrespecting one of the players. Like, no, you're disrespecting my dog. Yeah. Like, that's, nah, facts, that's bro. I hate the balance, but I, yeah. that's why I don't talk about sports. No nah, facts. I swear. Like I don't, I don't even really talk about sports with people that much either anymore after being a professional athlete or even just a college athlete. Yeah. Cause like, I see like people be like, Oh, like this guy, he's really good. Like, I hope he gets hurt. And yeah. I know it's like to get back from injury so like to wish somebody to get hurt or hurt their knee or ankle or whatever it's like bro that's weird but like they don't know they're just like fans sometimes so like they're like oh i hope you like i hope this person gets this or that and it's just like just seeing it from a different perspective like perspective could just to where you're at in life could change the way you look at things so much and now i see it from way more than just like teams i like even like with basketball i see it as like players with families and relationships and friends and stuff like that so it's just like it's real different that's the divide that like the my goal for my podcast is like i feel like i say it on every single podcast to like humanize athletes because like you just broke it down perfectly because i also feel like 90 percent of those people are mm-hmm. the are the sports betters mm-hmm. like oh like i have i have greg on fantasy and i needed two sacks this game and mm-hmm. he only got one and a half fuck mm-hmm. him like yeah and then sucks. you get that fucking scumbag dm yeah you know, all the time where it's just like you know, it's just it's such a shitty like narrative to, to yeah. even have, but that's just the world we live in. You mm-hmm. know, you have to have some thick ass skin, I'm sure, as an athlete too. Literally, bro, like you gotta just and like we kind of talk about it in the building, just not even like looking at Twitter or whatever, because like just you look, you look worse. It's, it's people worse. Just, people talk the most on Twitter over over the internet, like and you just see so much negative stuff, and like if you if you look at it all day, it'll just it'll just drain you, you know, yeah. it'll take energy from you, it'll make mm-hmm. you not believe in yourself or whatever. So like, it's no point. It's just people just people just talking shit all day like people with nothing better to do they're just in their basement you know they got pizza boxes stacked up yeah all the way to the ceiling talking shit stuff. <laughs> dirty laundry and yeah. they're just, and they're just like they're just talking they're just, just ragging on people all day long so it's like that ain't wholesome bro that ain't gonna help you out but like yeah people do it so like i know i try definitely blocking out me and poe were talking about the other day me me and poe and and, and i think uh and brandon bryant we were just talking about just like negative energy and what what you what you take in and like if you're taking in like certain things like if you're just seeing it you might be taking it in so it's better just to not see it and just go about your day and just know who you are yeah 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 and no, i feel i feel like that's huge because i feel like you can understand where that can become a slippery slope for a lot of guys and for i'm sure real. it has yeah you know because a lot of people you know unfortunately are insecure in some sense and they you know their their goal is their image yeah so it's like if you see somebody kind of throwing shade at your image let alone on a high level, yeah, that's facts. gonna knock you the fuck down, and that's so gonna I'm saying. change your Especially when you're sure. trying so hard, you're, you're going to yeah. the facility, you're you're waking up early, you're lifting, you're trying, to, you're you're paying extra to get stretch after practice and stuff like you're doing stuff outside outside of what you have to do. You're doing like extracurricular stuff just to put yourself on top, and to see somebody try to bring you down, you're gonna be like, damn, like what am I doing all this for? So like, it's definitely something you want to stay away from as an athlete. I feel like, yeah. But uh, we can get into that section here. Okay, bet. Just so I can get you on your way. I mean, we still got 35 minutes. Or when you said you got to leave? Well, you, you got to leave soon. So this will actually work perfectly. So it's 2.24 now. Okay, bet. <clears throat> so we're going to do a new segment. Well, not a new segment, but is newly brought to you by Picasso's Pizza. Not only am I thankful that they're a part of this, but they're also my favorite pizza. So this, like, couldn't work any better. You like Me Picasso's? Too. Me too. I love yeah. Picasso's. Yeah. I feel like you can't go wrong. No, nah, facts. So this segment is going to be uh, questions from fans that I reached at. Well, they reached out to me on social media. So Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So we're going to usually we'll do five, but we'll do quite a few of them just because so many people had so many questions for Greg. So we'll start, we'll start with Twitter. Somebody posted a picture of you looking jacked. So we'll <laughs> start with that one. For so. Sure. So this one's from Dominic on Twitter. Said, "Ask him if he's hit the weight room. He's looking jacked." <laughs> yeah, I mean, or is this Photoshop? <laughs> nah, I think it's real. But uh, <laughs> you think it's real. Yeah, I think it's real. It might be real. But um, I mean, I'm always hitting the weight room, kind of like year round, trying to get stronger. Even though, like, even though, like, I'm not always putting on more weight. I'm always trying to change my body fat comp- composition and get more lean muscle mass and kind of get bigger. So I haven't really put on that much weight, but I've definitely been in the weight room. Yeah. This question comes from the Bills Mafia babes, which are legends in the community. I made a cameo for them, for them once, like yeah. a little video saying. Yeah. Like, they're, like, uh, they're, they're the goats Yeah, next to Josh Allen. <laughs> it says, Groot, 
A lot of people don't know the wonders of Buffalo until they live here. What are some things you miss about Buffalo during the off season? Um, I say just the people, just like how wholesome the people are. You know, that's probably the biggest thing. Cause like in South Florida, you're at like a green light. You're at a red light. It turns green and it automatically like, beep. You're like, dang, it just it just changed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, that type of stuff doesn't really happen up here. You know. Yeah. So, I mean, there's that, and then also the wings and pizza, of course. Yeah. Like barbell. You yeah. know, it's funny. I tell people that all the time when I'm in Florida. Just like, because everything, like, that's not, I wouldn't say it's calm here. Mm-hmm. But you go to Florida, everybody's just, because, like, in my head, I'm like, bro. like, if you do that to me up here, we're fucking fighting or something. Yeah, like, it's going to be so out of the ordinary. Yeah. Bro, in Florida, you can't even merge. Like, let's say you're running out of space on the highway. Your lane is, like, going into something else. Like, people will literally, they'd rather zoom by you and you have literally, you're about to hit the, hit the wall. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, man, not my problem. This one comes from from Dan on Twitter, what's the most impactful thing he has learned from Von Miller on and off the field? Um, most impactful thing I learned from Von, probably just like his aggressive mindset. I mean, he, me and him are really like different players. And I kind of touched on that like in the summit. Like, me and Von are very different players. He's obviously like a quicker, more more bendy guy, more of a power. I use more speed to power, long arm stuff like that. So. We kind of play different, so it really hasn't been that really that much on the field stuff. It's really been like just the mindset and just knowing like you got to take your shots, you got to take risks, you got to take chances, and they'll pay off. So it's really that for me. We'll do one more on Twitter. This one's from Brian Adams. How do you feel about your nickname, Groot? I like it. I mean, it's uh, my DC in college gave it to me, and it's kind of like Greg Russo is GR, and then Russo is like ooh, so it's like Groot. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? So yeah. like Groot. Uh, and yeah, like my, my, and it's kind of cause my, my hair's usually out. So it kind of, it looks like a, like the top of a tree or whatever. Yeah. So like my DC <laughs> Blake Baker told me in college, he started calling me Groot and then it kind of just stuck. And now it's, yeah, just like that. <laughs> yeah. So it kind of just stuck. And then now it got to what it's become. Okay. Here's a good one. So here's uh we'll do three from Instagram and then we'll go to Facebook. All right, cool. Uh, so this one's from Justin Zoyzak on Instagram. If you're Groot, who would you consider your rocket raccoon in your life? Rocket raccoon in my life. So that'd be kind of like a sidekick yeah. kind of type five. Uh, probably my little brother because me and him are always like just joking around. Like when I was playing Madden a lot, me and him would be on the game. So probably him. Okay. This one is from Seagates5 on Instagram. If you had to make a Mount Rushmore for the Buffalo Bills, who would be on it? For, like, the players? Yes. Uh, it could Josh, be past and present. Probably Josh, Jim Kelly, Bruce Smith, and I'll go – I'll go – so I did offense, defense for the past, for the present. I'll put – I'll put Poyer. Okay. Poyer, too, because I feel like Poyer just, like – Embody so like you know just like hard work and like just great teammate all that mm-hmm. stuff and he I feel like he's changed the culture here or helped change the culture here in Buffalo in in the past what five years or whatever so yeah okay so one more on Instagram from Dunderhill twenty three well who was your favorite athlete growing up favorite athlete I liked Sean Taylor a lot how could uh, you not yeah that was that's a no brainer. I can, I'll add some more, too. I liked mm-hmm. Randy Moss growing mm-hmm. up. Sean um, Taylor, Randy Moss, Adrian Peterson, too. Ed Reed as well. Yeah. Yeah. All you boys. Yeah, big Miami guys. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, only, it's only right, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it's only right. Okay, so this one's from Ryan Thomas on Facebook. Okay. What was Greg's favorite first moment as a Buffalo Bill on the field? Favorite first moment? Probably picking off. Patrick Mahomes, my rookie season. Yeah. That, that was fire. You still got the ball? Hell yeah, I got the ball. Yeah. I actually don't know where it's at. Oh, so you don't <laughs> no, got but it? I got it. I, got, I know it's in my house. Okay. It's in like a closet somewhere, but like. You got to hit the bills. Yeah. I'm like, hey, can y'all just paint one more for me? We'll just <laughs> no. keep it between us. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was, a, that was a cool moment. If not that, then sacking Matt Ryan. It was like a strip sack in the snow. That yeah. was cool too. Okay, so. From from Dan on Facebook, is Groot your favorite fictional character? He's my favorite fictional character. Uh, yeah, but I'd say that's more so because of the nickname. Honestly, yeah. it's not like I like the Groot. 
as my favorite character, and then people started calling me Crew because I didn't come up with the nickname. Yeah. But like, it's a cool nickname. But like, mm. favorite fictional character probably Spider Man. I like mm. the old movies with Tobey Maguire from back in the day. The new one's pretty good too. Yeah, I like, like the we new talk one. about that. Yeah, yeah. The new one's pretty dope. But I feel like Spider-Man. the Tobey Maguire ones, like, bro, it was, no, that's classic. just. Like, I feel like that's at least it's myself. Like, that's when Spider Man got like introduced to my life. Yeah, facts. Me too. Me yeah. too. It was just like they're iconic, bro. I'm about to watch one on my flight home. Actually, yeah, yeah. All right. <clears throat> So this is from Nate. I don't know if this is necessarily a question, but it says in very large letters, Vaughn said that you grew to 6'10". I read it, didn't hear it. If he was just clowning or serious, is it real? No, he's joking around. I'm definitely not 6'10". So you're 6'9". <laughs> yeah, I'm 6'9". <six> <laughs> uh, not the rapper, though. <laughs> yeah, right? Can't have that out here. No, no. All right. We'll do this one be the last one. This one's from Joshua Williams. What advice would you give yourself at the age of 15? At 15? So that was probably two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, a year ago, actually. <laughs> no, but at the age of 15, I'd say, you know, this it's very cliche, but just set my mind to something and don't let anybody, like, get me off that path. You know, just uh, just believing in myself. I feel like, like I said, it's cliche, but it's just so, it's, it's important. You know, like, if you're not going to believe in yourself, who's going to believe in you? So, I mean, just knowing, like, you're doing this and whenever you set your mind to something, knowing – knowing that, like, you're going to follow through with it. Also, I don't know what religion Joshua is, but just, like, trusting God and just trusting the process and knowing that everything happens for a reason and being strong in your faith. Yeah, so a lot of these questions are we're asking kind of the same questions, so I'll just leave it in your realm. We'll, we'll, we'll look back at it at the end of the season. What is your goal sack-wise? Uh, I actually got a similar question earlier, and, and I, said, I said, like, I don't, I don't really have a goal sack-wise. Well, you I, went four and eight, right? Yeah, yeah. I had four my first year, eight uh, this past year. I'd obviously, I'm obviously shooting for like double digits in the most possible. But I'm saying at, eleven. That's my, yeah. I mean, my guess, eleven or no, twelve. Definitely, I feel like that'd be that'd be great, you know. But like, definitely, just my approach with it is I try not to get too caught up in the goal, mm-hmm. but I try to get caught up in the process. I try to get caught up in making sure like I'm I'm getting every single rep in the lift. I'm I'm watching film. I'm doing all the things for my body. I'm getting myself ready. I'm I'm on top of my playbook. I'm no, I'm trying to win the day every single day. I'm not just trying to be like, all right. Because I feel like when people get too focused in life on the goals, like, oh, I want this. I want to have this. I want to have that. You're not falling in love with the process. For you to get those goals, you got to just fall in love with the process. And all that stuff is going to come to you because you're doing the right things. You're, you're, For example, in football, you're winning your one-on-one rush. If you just say, oh, I want to get a sack, doesn't mean you're going to go out there and get a sack. You got to be like, no, I want to beat the dude in front of me. That's going to be a byproduct of beating a dude in front of you. So I feel mm-hmm. like just having that mindset of like, I'm going out there, I'm going hard, not letting nobody get in my way, that's going to that's gonna carry me through however long I play. And I feel like all the production comes after that. Yeah. So what would you say to like somebody who is trying to chase the same journey as you and maybe having second thoughts or just like not really willing to trust the process? Uh, like I said, you, you got to believe in yourself, believe in yourself, believe in yourself. I can't say that. Can't say that enough. And um, when it comes to just the process, you got to know that, like, there's going to be trials and tribulations. There's going to be ebbs and flows. There's going to be setbacks. But that's all part of the journey. You know, like, a lot of times I feel like the turtle wins the race. So as long as you keep going and you're going in that steady direction, you're going to get to where you want to get to. You know, like, it's a marathon. It's not a race. Yeah. I also feel like like struggle and, like, I guess uh, I don't want to say the wrong word, but, like, We'll just stick to that. Like, just like the struggle and like the trials and tribulations to be successful, the things you got to go through. I feel like if you handle those the best you can and learn from them, Mm -hmm. then you're going to be the best person. Exactly. Yeah. And it's going to be, it's going to all be worth it. I would also say, like, Coach Diaz used to always tell us at at University of Miami, like, you got to run your own race. Like, your ceiling and, and, what you could achieve might be different from the next person. So, like, you can't look at this guy and be like, oh, I want to have what he has. You got to be like, nah, I want to maximize my potential because my potential might not be his potential. It might be a little bit less. It might be three times better. You know what I'm saying? So, like, just knowing you got to win your race and maximize what you're trying to do and, and squeeze the orange in your life, I feel like that's huge. It's not always about, like, oh, I want to get what he has. I want to get like him. Nah, you, you, need to, you need to try to get like yourself but just the best version of yourself. For sure. 
Well, man, I thank you for coming on. For sure. Even though sure. we literally like set this up probably yeah, like, within like an, an hour, hour <laughs> an hour <laughs> ago. I was like, hey, and shout out it. to all the fans too that like wanted to ask so many questions because like I've done nine podcasts where we had question segments, and I've had like six or seven. I think we have like twenty eight, and that was within like forty minutes. So that's super dope to see sure. how in depth you guys are and how how much you guys want to kind of speak to Greg and stuff. Yeah. And appreciate y'all. Yeah, it was super dope, man. Thanks for coming, man. Uh, for sure. Probably get some working in the off season. Just kind of got to see how the schedules align and stuff like that. But I can't wait, and I'm I'm sure I'll see you before the season starts. Yeah. Obviously before camp too. But man, thanks for coming. For sure, for sure. Thanks for having me, bro. Yeah, appreciate you. Yes, sir. What's that? So I need you to like, subscribe, and peace. I can't take no loss. Huh? I don't even know what it costs. Huh? I hit the ground and I go off. Yeah. Hit the ground and I go off.